we will continue with the programming of the MC2000 T2 controller and look at the various insert functions within the T2 controller. These are accessed by pressing the F2 key from the main edition screen. As you see the descriptions of the six functions that pop up, scroll from right to left on the bottom of the screen. The F1 function is the shift code. By pressing F1, you will insert a special shift code symbol, T. This symbol will output a single character you select, specified in the controller parameter screen. Please consult your operator's manual for more information or consult MECO. By pressing F2, we return to the insert screen. By pressing F2 again, you can insert a date code with many possible formats. To select one of the date codes, either hours, minutes, days, year, etc., scroll to the desired format and press the push button. This will insert a special date code symbol depending on which format you choose. The date and timestamp will always be referenced through the controller's internal clock and calendar. Make sure the date and time are correct before inserting a date code. To adjust the clock or calendar, go to the controller's parameter section or see your operator's manual. Again we will return to the insert screen by pressing F2. By pressing the F3 button, you will open a window stating logo type and file. Select logo type to open up the list of logo files. There should be two default logos programmed into the controller, with one being the Kuth logo and the other the CE logo. To select one of these, scroll to the desired logo and press the control knob. For this example, I will choose the Kuth logo. You will see that after I select the logo, a .log file shows up on line 1 of my program. A logo file should always be on a line by itself with no other logos or text. To set the size of the logo, you adjust the character height as if it were a standard character. I will set my logo in this example to 12 millimeters and run a test to display it on the screen. Using the X setting in the F6 positioning window, you can position the logo anywhere you want within the marking window. Logos can be programmed at MECO or MECO can provide the customer with logo generating software at no charge. After opening the insert screen, pressing the F4 function will open up the counter window with C1 and C2. Select C1 and it will insert a fairly lengthy machine code showing a bunch of zeros. Those are just placeholders and will not show up in your mark. Under the control parameters, you can adjust how many zeros you want marked. Select a minimum and maximum, etc. For now, the default settings only mark one character starting with zero and increases by one each time. As you watch, you will see that every time I press the green button to execute a mark, the number increases by one starting with zero. You are also able to override the current number sequence by scrolling the push button over to the current value and entering in a new number. This will start the count over at the number manually entered. Next we will go to the insert screen and press the F5 function to insert a pause. Inserting a pause will allow the controller to pause the marking unit until you signal the marker to continue. For this example, I'm going to key in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on line 1 and A, B, C, D on line 2. Once I'm finished typing in my two lines, we need to make sure the cursor is blinking after the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To insert a pause after selecting the F5 button, select the first line item, wait for signal 1, you will see the special symbol show up on the first line after your text. Now if we press the green button to start the mark, 
you will see the marker executes the first line of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then pauses. The marker will stay in the pause position until you either press the red button to cancel or the green button again to continue the rest of the mark. In this case we'd finish our mark marking the second line A, B, C, D. This feature is used primarily to be able to mark multiple lines that you would not normally be able to mark within the window limit. For example, in our current mark we have our two lines of text with the pause after line 1. If we change the character height to 12 millimeters for each line this would put our marking out of limits. With the pause feature if we go to F6 and set our X and Y parameters to 0 for both line 1 and line 2, you will notice when we hit the test button that the text overlaps. This is what we want to happen because otherwise the text wouldn't fit inside the window. Now watch as I mark the first line and after the unit pauses, I will move the head down underneath the first mark and press the green mark button again to finish line 2. To input a 2D data matrix code from the main edition screen, press F2 to insert and F6 to open the 2D code screen. For now, we'll select the square data matrix option. After selecting square data matrix, you will see a special symbol that says DMS with a set of parentheses. The cursor will automatically be blinking in between these parentheses and you can insert any characters you want included into the 2D code. For our example, I'm going to use 0 through 9. You can change the size of the 2D code just like changing character height and I'm going to put the 2D at a height of 12 millimeters. Once you have set your parameters, you are ready to make your mark. The 2D controller will automatically select the amount of rows, columns, and amount of dots needed in the 2D code. This concludes the MECO MC2000 training video. If you have further needs or questions, please see your operator's manual or contact your local MECO representative. You can also reach MECO for assistance at 888-369-9190 or visit our website at www.meco.com.